All right, boys. This is going to be an epic one here. All right, we have all the Voltrons I could muster up. Let me go through the line real quick. We're going to do some big time comparisons. I'm just going down the line so you can kind of see them all. Oh, what's that? Boom. Amazing. There's the uh, 5 Pro. All right. So I have a, not including vehicle Voltron SOC, I have a couple more um, that I was going to bust out just to kind of show you. I have a custom one. I'll put them all to the side. I'll put them um, backwards so you can check them all out that way. We'll get a good comparison on these guys. All right, so let's start off. 1981 slash 84. I'm gonna call it the original. Chrome, this is how it came back in the day. Heavy, chunky boy, all right? So here we go. Boys, busted out the tape measure. He's 12 inches to the top of the wing, the original. Now, uh, the head's fire. That's been lost for a while. They've done manual heads that you can just pull off, recreate the poses. It's more of taking pictures, I think, nowadays than it is really uh, playing with on the high-end figures. It's more getting the poses. That's why the articulation, the details are so good on all of this stuff. So. Here's a quick breakdown of this one. Here's the KO of the classic 84. And that one, unless you got the Godaiken box set, he didn't come with anything. This is the Matchbox version. This here is the made in Taiwan version. The other one was probably made in Taiwan, but anyway, well, made in Japan. There's a there's a bunch of different versions. It's a whole big thing. If you start getting into Voltron, you're gonna see quickly all the different variants. I'll show you one for example here. Okay, you see the original. Now, the KO. So it's little details like that. The paint's not good on the KOs. Um, now, one other quick thing. I did modify this. So, as you can see on the butt, any Voltron fan will know the original Voltron, the arms can't spread like that. Now, I left this one, the Matchbox alone. But you can see here... See those fins? Right there. Those ones there are preventing him from, let's say, he can do a T-pose, but you have to keep, you have to disconnect his arms and plug them back in because if you try to swing his arms up and do a T-pose, they'll just pop out because that metal will rub up against these shoulder rings and just pop out. So that's why I have them in this pose, which is awesome. There was only a little bit of plastic, a little bit of metal that I had to remove. Um, I took the tails out. You know, I wanted to keep them, try to make them a little, I don't know, I guess more tune accurate, a little zipped up. So you cannot get that pose unless you customize it. And the only thing you have to do is it's unlike like unlocking an iPhone. You just have to get rid of a couple things and you can do this and it's not hard cut off a couple pieces of pla pieces excuse me pieces of plastic um, this is real easy to work on and it's a real popular Voltron that's why they keep making these KOs so if you get into collecting Voltrons um, you gotta watch what you're doing it's that simple know who you're dealing with but 
with that being said, for an old school robot, he's a nice, chunky, hefty boy. Old school vibe. I also, um, those, the middle of the chest is the die cast piece. So isn't the crotch. There were stickers there. I just pulled them off to give them a different, like a V chest. Instead of, you know, that type of look. So, we'll head over to... I think the Mad Toys came out first, and then it was the Icarus. So these three here are in a category together. Um, a thing I was saying is that I am so sick of them giving us decals or stickers for the Voltrons. I want the numbers to be embroidered on or have them come with the stickers. Because what really sucks is as a collector... I don't want to unpeel the stickers. I don't want to worry about putting them on crooked. I don't want them to, you know, come off later on because of humidity or whatever. It just sucks. They should be molded on. Sorry to keep coming back to the 84 volt. No, I'm not. <laughs> but um, this one had stickers. They, they were on the Lions during manufacturing. So, I mean, to have them not come on it all kind of sucks because now you're in that dilemma do i put them on do no i gotta worry about doing it right and i don't know guys it's a whole thing so please going forward anybody even the three zero didn't come with the the numbers none of them look at every voltron i think i gotta put the numbers on boys Blitzway, no numbers, man. It would have been nice if they were engraved in like old school. Oh, that would have been beautiful. All right, so here we go. Don't know which one came first. The two on the right are the Icarus. Direct copies, except you have the dark version and the regular version. And I don't get why they don't come out with more dark Voltrons. I mean, you can't... It's crazy. Voltron's popular. The dark goes off the shelf like crazy. The last one I seen besides the Fantasy Jewel, I think was the Super 7 version. But it's like, come on now. You need that metal, boys. And I want to show you something. Um, I'm getting ahead of myself. But right here. On the upper thigh. See how that's like an underwear effect and that's like a boxer brief effect? That's what I'm talking about. I like the one on the left better. So again, these are a KO. I'll get to this, but I just wanted to see it, show you because I saw it. So I made a video on all of these pretty much Voltrons unboxing. If you want a little more detail um, and things of that nature, you can check out those videos. But we'll get back over. Not sure about the Mad Toys. Again, which one came first. There, It's a KO of a KO. So if you're looking here, you can see the paint's different. Face sculpt is a little different. The design on the wings. It's like one of them uh, spot the difference pictures, you know? The number's engraved, though. Man, that looks tight. I love the square digital version, but they didn't overdo it so he doesn't look like a Lego toy or anything like that. The difference is, is again, they're both pretty much the same uh, mold, right? But the one on the left, you can't really get that thing to pose. I've tried. It's weird. Um, yeah, it's hard to explain. It's just they're supposed to be the same mold, but they have, I don't know, it's still different. You can see that paint. There's the difference here, boys. All right. Now, the dark version, same thing here. That's why I have them next to each other. And I'll tell you, I'm just a sucker for some of these knockoffs. Now, the inspiration, if you see a Fantasy Jewel video 
I recommend you to watch it if you look it up anywhere and you're going to see something. The eyes are red. Okay. This Icarus, the eyes came red. As I'm looking at it, I'm um, sorry, as I'm looking at the fantasy jewel, the eyes on the lions, the face, they were this color. They weren't painted as well. Of course, again, it's a knockoff version. So the best quality is going to come from, you know, Bandai, of course. And you see the little nuances. The eyes are different colors. Um, you know, instead of having redundant yellow eyes, blue, yellow, they kind of swap the eye color, which is nice. Um, but if you, when you get back over to here, this is Hagar's Voltron. You're able to swap out the crest. Um, the faceplate does come off. If you wanted like the open mouth face or to swap the face with the soul of Chagokin, I think you can. You can take out that chest. You can put that uh, cross in the fantasy jewel and vice versa. Brandon Wong from Supreme Collector has a uh, video on that. Look at that smoky sword. I told you. Look at that sword, man. I put a lightning effect around it. He just looks so cool. This is one of my favorite robots here. Mr. Gokin, if you're watching this, buddy, this is the one. So what I did was I got chrome paint. The cap looked chrome. I didn't know it was a whole process. I sprayed the legs. Now, if you see any videos, the legs are not going to look like mine either. They're going to be raw metal. What I did was I put some clear coat. I put some quote-unquote chrome paint, came out silver. It still looks better than the raw metal, but... It's a knockoff version from China. They were trying to save money, and you can see the feet are chrome. The story with this one here is, I guess the black and arm lions came out two or three years. The leg lions didn't come out. People were selling it off, selling the arms off, giving up on the set, and then they came out with the leg lions, and I think they had to rush it out or not paint the legs to get them out maybe they went over budget that was the only way to finish it i don't know anyway i painted the eyes red because i'm looking at the icarus and i'm like he just looks so cool he's a dark voltron he should have red eyes so that's why i customized him and you know he's he's i'm thinking of him like the war machine okay they're supposed to be the same height the one on the right is the solar chugokin by bandai He's supposed to be a little shorter. They're supposed to be the same height. Speaking of height. These guys are both. Ooh. I would say 12 and a quarter on the Icarus to the top of the wing. And 12 on the Mad Toys on the left. So Icarus is a little taller. If I had to choose one. I would definitely go with the Icarus guys. Mad Toys is garbage. Like, really. That's like, you can't pose it, nothing. So, he's going to be the Dark Voltron. Icarus is going to be the same height. All right. And we have... Now, here's the difference in the wings you'll be able to see. The Fantasy Jewel. I can see it better angle here, but it's 13 if you can't see it. And 13 and a quarter. So those thighs give you about a quarter inch, I think. Yeah, it looks about it, yeah? But this guy looks so cool, man. I'm telling you, I can't recommend him enough. If you're able to get a Fantasy Jewel, pick one up. So cool, especially if you like to customize. Now, he came in with the dark thighs. But what happened was, he's kind of easy to work on in some aspects. The thighs come off pretty easy. The thighs were scratched. So I said, you know what, fuck it. Took off all the paint, exposed the metal, sanded it down easily, painted it with my Honda touch-up paint black. I used the rest of it. And I think for the first time really painting, not being a real painter, they came out pretty good. So anyway, that's that. Because the thighs were painted anyway, and the crotch is plastic. 
So either way you slice it, it's not going to look... I mean, unless you're Bandai and you can do one of your paint jobs on it. The translucent, smoky sword, amazing. This thing is a heavy fucking piece of shit. It is. It's a piece of shit, but it's awesome. It's jiggly. The tolerances aren't there like they are in the SOC, so it's wobbly, but it's amazing. I mean, if, again, Fantasy Jewel KO, get it. Here's the SOC, the granddaddy, the one that wanted to pay homage to the um, Bandai 84, 81. So that's why they didn't do the leg coverings or, I mean, this was a while ago. They didn't really try to do the leg coverings, maybe. So then we'll come over here. So this is where we start getting into the engineering. The leg coverings, this is the 3-0. So if the SOC was normal, it'd still be a little taller because I can see the Fantasy Jewel is taller. So we have the 3-0, a little shorter, a little lighter on the die cast. It's good. It seems like a solid figure that you can really get down and pose and kind of play with. I love how they did the leg coverings. I love the circles. I love how that looks, like that metal look. Even on the legs, they, they covered it up, which is cool. I mean, you can still see a little top of the leg, but the bottom of the leg still showing. I mean, I don't know why these companies, and it's not even like shiny chrome on this. You see the SOC. They have a reason to have that chrome on there. Bust out the ruler action. Yeah, he's about 12 inches, but he seems a little, I think he's like a centimeter or two under the Fantasy Jewel. Or the normal, what normally would be the SOC. Again, no numbers engraved, which is a disappointment. They gave you the stickers. They gave you some leg coverings. Now, this is up to you guys. Since they reissued the Voltron... The Solar Chagokin is on the left. The prices come down dramatically. And it's about the same price. I mean, these two are the same price. So if you look it up, I would honestly go with the Soul of Chagokin. I'm going to tell you why. Forget the leg coverings. You don't need them on this figure, the 3-0. And it's... You're getting probably one-third the metal. Because... He's heavy. The Solar Chagokin is worth it. One third the metal for same price. Shorter. Just for some leg cover. Not worth it, guys. Not worth it. The 3 zero is awesome. But if you're going to get hardcore and, and say, hey, what are we doing here? Then you're going to go with the SOC. That's the smart decision. Okay? Bang for your buck, money. Wait, Wait for the... 3-0 to come down. I don't think too, too many people, maybe hardcore fans are buying it. Now we're going to get over to something bigger. The Blitzway, boys. Nobody's going to understand until you have it. That's the issue. This thing, there's no other combiner that's over, over 15 inches. You're seeing it right here. Now you see that? Now look, that's with an A stance. That's with a little bit of a hunch going on. He's not even fully erect. I'm going to say he's he's over 15. He's 16. he got to be pushing 16 inches fully straight. He's 15 and a half right now, a little hunched over. See, I wish right here, these two, if those matched, that would be so cool. I love that bicycle short looking effect rather than the underwear. But anyway... <clears throat> People can complain about proportions, tune accuracy. 
I mean, if they came out with a white, I think it was white, right? I don't know. If they came out with a tune accurate one, that would be amazing. So I put the blazing sword from the Mad Toys in so he could use it. There is a Tokyo exclusive version coming out, guys. There are a couple things. If you're into Pacific Rim like I am, there's a Crimson Typhoon on the way. Look it up. Crimson Typhoon. I think it's Infinity Studios. I forget the name of it. He's coming out. Alloy. It's about time. I'm glad they're not doing another Gypsy Danger because I think Good Smile Company is doing a Gypsy Danger alloy. Soul of Chagokin did an amazing job. I would highly recommend that. I did a video on Gypsy Danger. Um, giveaway coming out. Keep an eye out, guys. Just giving you a heads up. $50 giveaway. Coming out. This is just from me. To my fans who are sticking around. Here we go. So. Almost anybody can do this mod. On the back of the legs. You can't really see it because it's chrome. But I'll zoom in. So you see that little. Uh, two lines going left and right. That piece. That's in between. The circle in here. So that little kind of rectangular piece. Whatever. So if you look over here. I removed it. You see the chrome? So I cut that plastic notch out on both sides. Just to give you an idea. Okay. Now. You can see he can bend his knee, which is awesome. He could bend it backwards because of the lion's legs. You know how lions have that backwards knee or whatever. Then I obviously have him in that leaping sword pose. Smile face. Not smile face. So you can see the differences. Between the knockoff. And the real. Chiseled face. Nice looking statuesque. Goofy motherfucker. Hey. Fucking idiot. All right, here's the sides. Look at that paint difference. You have a metallic on the right. You have more of a flat. So maybe if Mad Toys didn't go out of business or whatever happened, maybe they were going to do a metallic version. But that paint, man, it has this flat black, and this has the speckles in it, so it gives it like a different... And look at the Icarus just looks so much, I don't know, the detail on it, the way the light hits the paint, the detail really comes out. Black Icarus. I think this is my favorite though. The fantasy jewel. Side by side. And I don't think the not chrome on the fantasy jewel matters because he is a darker version. But I'm so glad I did the eyes red. Way better. Way better. It was a labor of love. It was a little painstaking. Now here you go. It looks like 3-0 did uh, 
tried to paint it chrome and then realized there was a little more to it. it looks like they did my job. But anyway, I think they wanted to kind of more or less hide the legs and maybe not expose them because the whole idea is to hide the legs. But it's like who's copying who now? And the Blitzway right here. All right, he's he's my personal favorite because he's amazing. And then I think the second has to be the Fantasy Jewel. There's just something about it. Maybe because I put a little labor of love into it. I customized it a little bit. So maybe it has a special place. And one last thing I didn't point out here. I got rid of the hunch. Notice that? So, you see these every single Voltron. So the next Voltron maker, numbers engraved, do something with the bottom legs. Get rid of that hunch. I mean, they did a pretty good job starting to cover it up. And I will give 3-0 credit. They do have it. But I think the wing placement... Because you can see the difference in the wing placement. Is up further, so you got that big ball in the back. Now look at this. The wing placement is back away. So I think they found a lot better way to hide it. I mean, look at the SOC compared to the 3-0. The SOC looks fucking retarded. Look at that. Man, I can see why Mr. Gokin's pissed. But 3-0, that's it. Look, not too, too bad. I think it's the best one out of the bunch for trying to hide it besides what I did. And here's the backs. Damn, I didn't think it was going to look this good from the back. Shit. I'm telling you guys. Okay. Definitely get the Blitzway. Definitely get the Fantasy Jewel just so you can kind of see what it's like. You don't have to worry. It's not too expensive so you won't be, you know, if something you scratch the paint or something... And if, again, if you're into customizing, that Fantasy Jewel is amazing. The weapons that come with it, the smoky, translucent, dark weapons. And now, see how they covered up the back? That's the SOC slash Fantasy Jewel. Now, if you look over here, that's the SOC with thigh upgrades. Okay? 3 0 comes with it. So on the left are what the original thighs, which I still have for the Solar Chagokin, would look like. I have bags just protecting the chrome paint on that. So when the lion's legs go in. But anyway, um, no need for it because there's no knee bend on there unless you make it happen. Mad Toys and Icarus. Both have the indents. But again, these came out a lot earlier than all the other ones. The 3 0 just dropped, Blitzway was before that. And before that, we didn't really have, as far as I know, we didn't really have before the SOC. There wasn't too much Voltron diecast going on. That thing shot up in price. And they re-released it to try to combat the Blitzway. Drop down in price. There you go. Three zero drops. So that's it. That's the Voltron, boys. 
I'll leave you on this note. This is the TP01 Voltron. This is a non-combiner. First, I was going to do weathered. I customized this. First, I was going to do a weathered effect. But then I got into it more and more. Little battle damage now. Went from weathered to battle damage. I put some clear coat on there. That thing's amazing. Non-combiner though. Custom job. Thanks for watching, guys. Let's go Voltron Force.